Good evening. I'd like to call this meeting to order. It's the uh, Wallingford Planning and Zoning Commission's uh, Monday, December 13th, 2021 meeting. We'd all please rise for the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. And at this point in time, I'd like to introduce the uh, members of the uh, commission as well as staff that are here this evening. Uh, to my uh, far right is uh, Jamie Hine, who's an alternate on the commission. Next to Jamie is uh, Jim Fitzsimmons, who's a commission member. To my immediate left is uh, J.P. Vinoint, our uh, vice chairperson. Next to uh, J.P. is uh, Steve Allenson. And next to Steve is uh, David Parent, who's also an alternate on the commission. At the uh, lower table to my left, our staff table, it's uh, Kevin Pagini, who is our town planner, and next to Kevin is Cheryl Ann uh, Tubby, who is our recording secretary. And also sitting at the lower table in front of me is Allison Kapuczynski, who is our uh, town engineer. And I'm Jim Seichter. I'm the uh, chairperson of the, uh, of the commission. Our first order of business would be consideration and approval of our minutes for our November 8th, 2021 meeting. Any commission members that ha would like to make a motion or make any corrections, additions to the uh, minutes uh, prior to making a motion? Mr. Chairman, I move we accept the minutes of Monday, November 8th, uh, 2021 of the Wallingford Planning and Zoning Commission. I have just one, and it's just to me, I think it's just a small matter, uh, looking at the, uh, the attendance and who was at the meeting, not at the meeting. Uh, as far as absent, you mentioned uh, Steve, uh, Stephen Allenson. Uh, you indicated he, Steve was absent, but you indicated he was secretary, and I don't believe that we've, uh, we, we haven't voted on, uh, on officers recently. And what we were planning on voting on officers this evening is Mr. Cohen's not here. We won't be doing that. So I. I Mr. Allison shouldn't be you know, indicated as secretary. Other than that, uh, with that correction, we have a motion to accept the minutes. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Fitzsimmons. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Uh, before we get to our uh, first item on the agenda, there's several items that are not going to be heard this evening. The, uh, the first one is uh, item number one. It's the uh, public hearing. The Zoning Tax Amendment, uh, Planning and Zoning Commission for Data Center, Special Permit uh, for IX uh, and I-5 uh, Zones. Uh, that's going to be continued to our uh, January meeting. Uh, just a, a little bit of an update. Our uh, town planner, our uh, corporate counsel, as well as our uh, town engineer, you know, have been working, uh, I, I certainly think, very diligently on on these regulations. We had a uh, open the public hearing in October. Uh, there was certainly comments from commission as well as uh, numerous comments, concerns raised by members of the public. Uh, the individuals that I just mentioned have been you know, working uh, to research and address uh, some of those comments, some of those issues. They've also have been in contact with a uh, acoustical engineer and uh, Mr. Pagini had indicated to me uh, this evening that he anticipates that uh, come uh, the end of this week, this Friday, uh, that there should be uh, the proposed regulations uh, ready to be sent out to commission members as well as being available to uh, members of the, of the public that are interested. And again, uh, you know, looking at uh, the October meeting, there were a lot of you know, questions that were raised concerning uh, sound, vibration, health issues, uh, again, those are being looked at and have been looked at and researched by again, our town planner, our engineering uh, department, as well as our corporate council. So we fully anticipate uh, in January uh, that we should have those regulations available and uh, have our continuation of our public hearing at that time. Uh, another item that will not be heard this evening uh, is the uh, is a site plan self-storage facility for South Colony. Uh, 1074 LLC, South, uh, 1074 South Colony Road. That's continued to our February 14th meeting. 
Which brings us to our first item that will be heard this evening. It's uh, number two on the agenda. It's a public hearing, zoning tax amendment, planning and zoning commission to add section 4.12, uh, stormwater uh, management townwide. And I'd ask Mr. Allenson if you would please read the legal notice and then note all correspondence for the record. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Number 904-21, zoning regulation text amendment to add new section 4.12, stormwater management to the Wallingford zoning regulations. We have a proposed section addition and interdepartmental referral from our sanitarian dated November 8th, 2021. An interdepartmental referral from our fire marshal dated November 8th, 2021. Correspondence from the Naugatuck uh, Valley Council of Governments Dated, received November 12th, 2021. Uh, correspondence from the Lower Connecticut River Valley Council of Governments dated November 22nd, 2021. Uh, correspondence from Eugene Livschitz from the South Central Regional Council of Governments, received December 3rd, 2021. Correspondence to, our, to the town clerk of Cheshire from our town planner, mailed 11-8-2021. Correspondence from, to the town clerk of Durham from our town planner, mailed 11-8-2021. Correspondence to the town clerk of Hamden from our town planner, mailed 11-8-2021. Correspondence to the city clerk of Meriden from our town planner, mailed 11-8-2021. Correspondence to the town clerk of Middlefield from our town planner, mailed 11-8-2021. Correspondence to the town clerk of North Branford from our town planner, mailed 11-8-2021. Correspondence to the Town Clerk of North Haven from our Town Planner, mailed 11-8-2021. And email correspondence from Adelaide Kopfer, dated 12-13-2021. And I believe that is all, Mr. Chairman. Good, thank you, Mr. Allison. And I uh, should have indicated uh, that uh, as Mr. Cohan is not here this evening, Mr. Hine will be... Uh, uh, taking Mr. Cohan's place uh, this evening on all the applications. So I, with that, uh, Mr. Pagini, I believe uh, you and uh, Ms. Yep. Kapuczynski uh, have a presentation uh, prepared for us. If you could, again, give us, uh, before you start with your pr uh, presentation, just a very brief overview as to the genesis of this, if you would, please. Uh, we were basically required by MS4 requirements to uh, put in stormwater management regulations. Um, so we wanted to uh, come up with uh, a strong set of stormwater management regulations that would uh, reflect, you know, what we require now for applicants, uh, as well as uh, just what we thought would be um, strong uh, language for uh, water uh, quality and quantity control. So um, that's where pretty much the genesis of these came from, uh, just the general requirement from the MS4 uh, permitting. to add to that or okay with that uh, I believe you have a presentation for us so uh, we will uh, turn it over to you and I take it you probably want us to move out of your way so you don't <laughs> blind us uh, so this is the zoning regulation change to add uh, section 4.12 stormwater management to the uh, town of Wallingford zoning regulations uh, this is, this was uh, worked on by myself and uh, Allison Kapuscinski, the town engineer. Um, 
Uh, we held a public workshop on these uh, as part of the uh, full packet submission that was given to the commission members uh, on October 5th, 2021. Uh, we received no recommended changes uh, at that workshop. Um, and this will apply to projects in all zones throughout the town. So this is not district specific. This is uh, all zones throughout the town. Uh, it gives regulatory teeth to what the town normally requests for stormwater plans and calculations. Uh, and it provides a framework to applicants for what the town expects in a stormwater management plan. Uh, and, and it requires an operation and maintenance plan of the stormwater system to be filed on the land record. So that's a pretty uh, big change. Uh, and it includes its own definition section as well. And to uh, really formulate these regulations, we uh, not only used our own knowledge and experience that both Allison and I have, uh, myself drafting stormwater regulations and her work uh, reviewing stormwater uh, plans, uh, but we also looked at the Connecticut uh, Stormwater Quality Manual, uh, the Connecticut Department of Transportation Drainage Manual, as well as we looked at uh, other towns for uh, ideas as to what they require as well. And these are the subsections uh, to the regulations, uh, conformance to established standards, um, the applicability uh, that basically, uh, the applicability actually uh, gives the, uh, the applicants um, the guidelines as to when it is required. So anything over 10,000 square feet of impervious surface would require a stormwater management plan. Uh, the exemptions, so those are the uh, activities that are exempt from these regulations. Uh, the definition section, uh, the basic components of a stormwater management plan, so it gives the applicants uh, really guidelines uh, for what needs to be included in the plan. Uh, the documentation requirements, uh, for the stormwater management plan, uh, the hydrologic evaluation uh, of the plan, the peak flow attenuation, uh, the infiltration and stormwater quality, and then the certification and maintenance agreements. That's uh, basically the operation and maintenance plan as well as uh, an outline of what needs to be uh, in the operation and maintenance agreement and the plan. Uh, so some key takeaways, um, it uses two, 10, 25, 50, and 100 year storms to be used for hydrologic study. Uh, the documentation requirements, it requires drainage area contour mapping, uh, watershed calculations, pre and post development peak discharge rates, uh, soils permeability testing for infiltration systems, and pre and post development disconnected impervious area, uh, the reduction, and this will help the town track their MS4 goals. And as I said before, the uh, operation and maintenance plan will be filed on the land records and it'll include the certification and maintenance agreement. Uh, this will stipulate the inspection frequency of the stormwater system, uh, the maintenance requirements and the intervals for all proposed stormwater management practices on the site. Uh, the applicant will be required to file a notice of operation and maintenance plan on the land records. Um, and it, this will come up in title searches and will alert future owners of maintenance responsibilities of the uh, stormwater system. And an as-built survey is required prior to a certificate of zoning compliance or certificate of occupancy uh, after the uh, approval. And that basically sums it up. Um, if you have any questions, please direct it towards Allison or myself. Technical questions towards Allison. <laughs> chance if you would please it's just it's a little blinding terrific thank you commission members with uh, questions for either uh, mr. Pagini or uh, Ms. Kapuscinski mr. Fitzsimmons Excuse me. thank you mr. chairman uh, just a couple of questions um, this is a uh, tip off, so I'm not sure who was going to take field this question. Um, nobody, nobody's here from the water department, but this is our regulation or do we, ha did they have input into this 
suggested regulation? Yes, they had input during the whole process. So okay. anything that's in this is uh, suggestions from them as well. Okay. Um, and then I, I, I don't mind telling you when I was reading it and looking at the overview, I, I hate to bring this up because we end our meetings always talking about it. Where is the enforcement in this? Where is the what if someone doesn't do what they say they're going to do part of this regulation change? Because I, I, I understand the importance of this, I get it, mm -hmm. but nowhere in here does it say if you don't do this, something's gonna happen. And I, you know, like, and I know they, you know, you talk about it being connected to a title search so the new owner would be responsible, but where's the teeth? Or was that discussed and rejected? Or is that a future change? You know, is, you know, what happens? I could shed some light if you'd like. Sure. So um, part of the stormwater management plan um, focuses on the MS4. With the MS4, um, we have abilities to restrict what people discharge to our MS4. So if there were concerns about a pollutant getting into the stormwater system, we would have grounds to go and do testing and possibly issue violations through that. Um, there also is an ordinance where if somebody's discharging to the stormwater system, the town system, then we could issue fines up to, I think it's $250 a day. So the ordinance is a town ordinance? Correct. The fines would be issued by who? Me. Engineering. Mm -hmm. Are they attached to the um, uh, property owner? Yes. Like, the, the reason I ask is, is, is just the reality of, and I, I alluded to this when I began my question, we've always struggled with zoning enforcement. We have a log, we review at the end of every meeting, some people have been on the log for years. And, and our ability to fine is very limited. But I, I, I don't want to go that route with this, considering we've never done this before. I support it, but I just I wasn't sure about the enforcement. So the fines will be issued by the engineering department. And then attached to the land record, I, I, I forget what the term is, lien, right? Isn't the utilities attach a lien to it? Is, is that the plan? I or? think that's how law department typically handles it, but yes. that would be up to them. Okay. So I'm just trying to envision this. So, so let's say future, five years from now, a new condo application comes in, they file this. And then five years after the condo's built, they sell to another company. They would assume responsibility of this. There's no bonding here, correct? Correct. Is, was that explored? Um, I think just general bonding as they do now for stormwater management. Um, would be the same uh, reasoning that this would be, so. So I, th I think that's why we definitely wanted um, the notice of operations and maintenance manual to be filed on land record. So then when you were doing a title search for a property you might be buying, you would have to, you would be alerted to it and then you would be bound to follow it. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I guess if I could redirect the question, are you aware of any other town in the state that is requiring a on for future maintenance or failure to perform maintenance on something like this? I am not. Not that we saw, no. Is that allowed or again, you don't know? I'm not sure, to be honest. Yeah, I, I think I, it was, I think it was discussed, but law may have knocked it down, so. All right, I, 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 I would, I'd like, to, I'd, well, I'd like to be on record, I support this, mm -hmm. needs teeth. We could adopt it and then amend it, but it, it needs something to enforcement, only because the reality of what happens everywhere. So, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I guess, Mr. Fitzsimmons, how would you propose a, a <laughs> bond uh, of for you know a future? I, I guess I, I look at that as being somewhat problematic to have a bond, and I have the project today, I'm posting a bond, and then I've sold that project to someone else, and does that bond go with the project? And I'm not, I, I just, I just, I'm trying to think it through and just feel that could be very problematic. Yeah. I, if I might, and I, I think that's why I asked if it was even considered, because I think part of it is you generally know the viability 
and use you know within the first couple of years of the mm. project so someone's approved and built now they're now we're holding a bond generally for general s and e this could be included as a separate amount and not to be released you know until five years or two years of operation it is so it would be similar to the bonds we currently require for general s and e but if you if you're not if you're not able to if your plan doesn't work after two years, now we're into an enforcement situation. A bond would would allow us to, you know, hold money aside to make sure it's going to work. And, and so it's it's I, I envision it similar to the regular S and E bond. Yeah. So it seems a separate amount. Yeah. So I, I guess if if that's yep. kind of the, the 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 thought on that, I would think then if we had if we had a project, we approved a project, then you mm -hmm. could. Require a uh, a bond for that uh, for that amount or for that specific purpose. I would think that you would have the ability to do that. Yeah, I think we would have the ability. You know, so it doesn't necessarily have to be in the in the in the regulation. No, as long as the applicant would agree to that, and then sure. Yeah. And if I if I may, um, absolutely. There's certain land uses that do need further permitting by deep. And so what you mentioned before, the condo, that would not be one. But, you know, if there's an industrial commercial property, mm -hmm. then they would have further um, regulatory standards to meet there. So, you know, I kind of like how we could take certain projects and require it for certain developments, but then, you know, let other ones be handled by DEEP. State. The state, sorry, yes. Thank you. Other uh, commission members? Mr. Hine. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, that was actually uh, one of my concerns as well, is that I didn't see any um, teeth in the uh, proposed uh, regulations. But um, in response, and j I, I guess just a follow-up, um, I heard you say that uh, the town would be able to um, place fines or, or liens on properties uh, if there was discharge into the public um, or unreasonable um, discharge into um, the public water system. What about private um, properties? So, for example, um, my, uh, let's just assume my neighbor um, <laughs> has some sort of um, uh, has filed a storm water management plan, maintenance plan on the land records, and is not keeping up with that plan. And as a result, uh, I'm having um, a, you know floods in my backyard or something like that. Um, does the town? I, I mean, does the town have the ability at that point to come do an inspection and determine that the plan is not being followed and? Uh, place a lien or a, a fine on, on the homeowner? So for, if it's, you know, a single residence, I don't think that would be applicable to planning and zoning because it probably wouldn't have a zoning permit associated with it. Um, if it were a property that does have a zoning permit, then I actually get those kinds of complaints a lot now. And I go and I pull the records for that application and I'll do a site visit to make sure that everything's compliant. and you know, that they installed catch basins where they said they would and that their, um, you know, detention basin is overgrown and, and things like that. Yeah, no, because I, I, I just remember, you, you know, as an example, we had a, um, a group of neighbors that came in a, a month or two ago um, with respect to a CHO application, and one of their complaints was that there was a... Um, uh, a, a basin that was not being kept up or was blocked or something like that and that they were having overflows into their backyards. And I'm wondering whether under this proposal, they could go to the town and say, hey, listen, um, my neighbor here is not maintaining the basin as they said they would and, and we want the town to do something about it. Um, yeah, so, I mean, is that possible? So the matter that you're speaking of is more of a wetlands issue at this time. Yeah. Um, in the future, though, having these regulations would help me know exactly what was proposed and what was accepted as far as the detention basin goes. 
Mm -hmm. um, so I would be able to do a site visit and then possibly even a site survey with my department to check to make sure the depth is ad adequate and that the size is adequate. And if you found that it was not adequate, what would happen? I believe that I would be able to work with Kevin to issue a zoning violation mm -hmm. and have them uh, correct that. I was just going to say, as of right now, we have you know stormwater management uh, facilities that people haven't kept up. So as part of the conditions of approval, they have to you know maintain those basins. So we've actually given like you know zoning uh, enforcement letters. We've been uh, taking compliance uh, action against some landowners. So um, we do have the the teeth as part of the zoning regs because this goes into the full uh, scope of the regulations. So yeah. I, I'm just trying to play it out in my head. You know, you issue a, a, a violation letter uh, under those circumstances, and let's say the property owner doesn't do anything. What's the next step? It could potentially go to court. It could potentially go to DEP issue, uh, DEP issue, um, depending on the nature of the of the drainage issue. So, okay, fair enough. Um, I, I appreciate that. The um, my, my next set of questions regards the exemptions. Mm -hmm. um, who decides whether a particular application or project falls within one of the exemptions? Is it, is it um, you, Mr. Pagini, as the town planner when the application mm -hmm. first comes in, or is it us as a um, um, planning and zoning uh, commission? It's generally like every other application because there are exemptions right now as part of our regulations. So, you know, when it comes into the office, I'll take a look at it or Aaron will take a look at it, uh, the environmental planner, and we'll decide um, whether it meets certain criteria uh, as far as like the uh, special permit for the uh, soil excavation. You know, if, if we think sometimes the applicant will say that it, it doesn't disturb uh, a certain amount of soil and then we'll look at it and you know we'll make the uh, determination that it does meet that threshold. Um, we've had that rather recently, actually, with a homeowner who was digging up their yard. So, um, <laughs> as part of that's why, as part of uh, the exemptions, we took out the the commission granting the exemption because we thought you know smaller projects. Um, it was brought up to me that it would maybe uh, be too restrictive on smaller projects uh, for. Um, smaller applications because as of right now there are exemptions that are similar to this without a written letter from the commission. Okay, and, and, and that's fine, I, I, I get that. But then if that's the case, then I, I do have a question about exemption number two mm -hmm. because it makes reference to no exemption shall be approved that would cause an adverse impact. Mm -hmm. And that seems to be a very I don't want to say unclear, but broad yeah. exemption. And if, uh, um, no offense, but if if an application is coming in and you're the one making the decision, I, you know, I really don't know what that means at that point. And that gives you pretty broad latitude right. under that exemption to make that decision. And and I I do have a little... Um, concern about how broad that exemption is um, because you would be the one making that decision I, I, I guess if, if I could the way I read that it would be the Commission it said the applicant should demonstrate to the satisfaction of the Commission that the approval of the exemption will meet this standard well I, I, I mean, agree but I thought I just heard that it would be the town planner that would be making that initial decision and not the commission so well but again when I'm reading this it says it's 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 the commission I would assume on the a number uh, two you know one three and you know in four I would say that that would rest with our, our town planner but here I guess what I'm looking at Mr. Hines to me it says very emphatically that it's the satisfaction of the commission so to me that would rest with us Okay, so just so that I'm clear, if we have an application that comes in and the town planner has made a determination that this 
does not, this particular application does not require a storm management plan. Um, and it gets before us and we say, uh, you know, um, I'm not sure about that because I have some concerns about it affecting the health, safety, and welfare of the surface water. We can then request? Yes. Yeah, that, that, Is that, that how we see it playing out? I just want to yes, be clear. Yes, that's, that's how I wanted it to read. Okay. Uh, my next question um, had to do with, uh, I, with respect to the exemptions, um, one and three, when, you, when I was reading those, I was a little confused as to whether if you met one, would you qualify as an exemption? So f for example, if I had a project um, where I, ha I was developing, let's say, three residential lots, but I was going to be disturbing more than one acre of cumulative um, land surface area. I mean, could I rely upon exemption number three? No. Right, so th I almost wonder whether one and three should be combined. Because otherwise, you have them separate, and and I mean, to me, those are separate exemptions. Then, if you fall, if you fall under one, you're exempt. At least somebody could make some smart, creative attorney could make that argument. It's 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 generally it's it's pretty general language in a lot of stormwater uh, management regulations, um, and I've yeah. seen it come up before where you know you could create a subdivision with say four lots but not disturb uh, an acre of land cumulatively. Um, so a lot of times, you know, they'll build houses on each lot and the entirety of the, the project won't be an acre, but it'll be separate projects over time or something like that. But Yeah, so. I, I just, you know, it, it seems to me that what we're really saying is that if you have a project that will to serve less than one acre of cumulative land surface area and is less than four residential lots, um, yeah, then you're. But, yeah. but I, I get it. Um, you know, it's it's not a big deal. But I, I guess we just didn't want to be overly restrictive. Say someone, you know comes in with a subdivision with three lots and they're building a house maybe once every year or so. We don't want to make them have to do a full stormwater management plan just for that. So I yeah. guess that's where the, uh, I don't know if you could speak to that, but we just didn't want to be overly restrictive on like residential uh, developments. Yeah, well, well I suppose not, not every project's gonna be a residential development either. So, yeah. Um, but the, um, my last uh, question is with respect to the components of the stormwater management plan, um, subsection E. Uh, who decides whether a particular plan meets these requirements or these standards? I think I typically do. Yeah, okay. Because <laughs> um, I, you know, I did take a quick, uh, and of course I wasn't able to read the whole letter or email here um, that uh, came in today on, on these uh, regs. But um, it seemed like one of, one of the, the primary concerns was that there was a lack of definite, definitive standards. I mean, there, a lot of these standards um, are, are more general. Um, but, but there's no, um, there's very few uh, specific requirements. Um, and that seemed to be the writer's concern. And I don't know if you had a chance to take a look at those comments at all and whether you had any comments. I did those. see them come in. Um, I, I liked the language as it was written because if I see an issue with an application, then it's much easier to refer to a general requirement and say, well, you know, this isn't quite checking out, so there's, you know, you have to address that before it goes in front of the commission or, you know, before I recommend it for approval. Um, 
a lot of take a look at it before they're even you know looking to develop in Wallingford. So it's completely spelled out because I take meetings extremely often um, to go over all the requirements that I'm looking for. So yeah, okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate. It. Thank you. Uh, other commission members, any questions? I, I just want to make just a comment, Mr. You know, Mr. Hine made a uh, you know comment about a chode project in a uh, detention basin. Just to be clear, that detention basin was not on on chode property, so it was was not chode's issue. But I and I, I I didn't mean you were referring to that, but just for yeah, you know, but just for members of the public that uh, it was not a uh, was not a chode. Uh, showed issue as far as the tension basin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That, uh, I appreciate that clarification. Uh, before I go out to the public, uh, Mr. Pagini, uh, Ms. Kampuchinski, would you like to make any further comments? Uh, okay. No, Ms. I won't uh, <laughs> I won't bore you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, you never bore us. Uh, this is a public hearing. Are there any members of the public who would like to comment on the application? Uh, if you would, please come forward, state your name and address, and your comments. Seeing uh, none, I guess I would bring it back to the commission for any final comments that they would like to make before I uh, entertain a motion to close the public hearing. Seeing none, I'd entertain a motion to uh, close the public hearing. Mr. Chairman, I move we make a motion to uh, close the public hearing for application for 904-10, zoning tax amendment, as a planning and zoning commission as section 4.12 stormwater management townwide uh, we have a sec uh, we have a motion to close the public hearing do we have a second 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 by mr. Fitzsimmons uh, voting beginning with mr. Hine yes to approve yes 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 and yes public hearings closed at this point in time I'd entertain a motion on the application mr. chairman I make a motion that we approve application 904-21 text amendment stormwater management a zoning text amendment to add section 4.12 to the Wallingford zoning regulations that establish uh, stormwater management regulations in all zones throughout the town of Wallingford as proposed in language entitled stormwater management dated December 2nd uh, 2021 because it improves stormwater management and gives it uh, and gives improved water management and gives consideration to restore and protect the ecosystem and water quality. And two, provides a framework to applications for what the town will expect for stormwater management. We have a motion on the application. Do we have a second? I'll second that. Second by Mr. Fitzsimmons, voting beginning with Mr. Hine. Yes to approve. Yes. 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 And yes, the application's been approved. I'd like to thank both uh, Mr. Pagini uh, as well as Ms. Kapuczynski for all the hard work they've, uh, they've done on this. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to uh, new business. Item number four is a site plan for a 770 square foot accessory apartment for C. Craig at 136 Chimney Hill Road. Is the applicant in the... Uh, if uh, the applicant would please come forward to... Uh, prepare for their presentation. Again, Mr. Allison, if you would please note all correspondence for the uh, record. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We have a... Uh, uh, interdepartmental referral from our fire marshal dated October 13th, dated receipt October 13th, 2021. An interdepartmental referral from our environmental planner, date of receipt October 13th, 2021. Interdepartmental referral from our sanitarian, date of receipt October 13th, 2021. Interdepartmental referral from our town engineer, date of receipt October 13th, 2021. Memorandum from uh, Aaron O'Hare, our environmental planner, dated December 7th, 2021. And we have a site plan. Date of receipt, October 6th, 2021. Thank you, Mr. Allison. And if the applicant would please introduce themselves and begin their presentation, please. Um, yep. My name is Charles Craig. This is and I'm Janet Craig. And 
we're here this evening, Mr. Chairman and Commissioners and staff members, seeking approval for uh, uh, our application for an accessory apartment above our three-car garage. Um, we have um, previously gotten approval for um, a variance for uh, front setback, um, which I, I believe you have. Uh, we've gotten approval from the health department, um, and we recently received approval for uh, Inland Wetlands uh, watercourse. Um, um, so I, I think we, we have um, uh, submitted and had approvals for, for everything except for the accessory apartment, which we're here tonight seeking. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Puccini, before I go to the commission, do you have any uh, comments uh, that you'd like to make on the uh, application? Uh, no comments on the application, but on the motions, I just noticed those two for the Valley View Drive are actually for Chimney Hill because they were very similar uh, applications, so I just may have uh, put them in the wrong place. And then the, the one from Chimney Hill is actually for Valley View. I apologize. But as far as with this uh, particular uh, year review of the application uh, uh, that no. they've submitted, you have no uh, no further comments, is that correct? It's in uh, full compliance with regulations as okay. far as I can tell. Okay. So. Commission members with any uh, questions for the applicant on, the, uh, on their application? Uh, Mr. Allison. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just wanted to make note that I mentioned the site plans were received on October 6th, that was incorrect for the record. It's October 8th. Okay. That is all, thank you. Okay, thank you. Seeing that there's no uh, questions from commission members on the application, again, this is not a public hearing, but we do entertain comments from uh, the public. If there's any member of the public that would like to comment on the application, please come forward with your name and address and comments. Seeing none, I guess I'll bring it back to the applicant. If you'd like to make any further comments, certainly you're not uh, you're not compelled to make any at this point in time. I think you've given a, a thorough uh, presentation of your application. I appreciate that. Uh, so with that, I would uh, entertain a, uh, a motion on the application. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we approve application 222-21, site plan approval request to construct a 707 square foot accessory apartment on plans entitled existing building location survey dated September 22, 2021. Subject to comments in the inner office memorandum from Vanessa Baltitis, Balt, Baltista, Batista, Batista, Batista. Uh, registered sanitarian health department to the Planning and Zoning Commission dated 10-18-2021 uh, and comments in an inner office memorandum from Aaron O'Hare, environmental planner to the Planning and Zoning Department dated 10-18-2021 and final inspection by the building department, the zoning enforcement officer. Good. We have a motion on the uh, application. Do we have a second? I'll second that. Second by Mr. Fitzsimmons, voting beginning with uh, Mr. Hine. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I vote to approve. I like the, uh, I like the plans, and uh, it looks like a good project. Yes. 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 And yes, your application has been approved. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Thank Chairman. You. You're welcome. Commissioners. Brings us back to, uh, brings us to our uh, next item. It's, uh, again, new business item number five. It's a site plan, 710 square foot accessory apartment for D. Watson, Jr. at 30 Valley View Drive. Again, the applicant, please come forward. Begin preparing for presentation. And uh, Mr. Allison, again, would you please note all correspondence for the record? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We have a set of site plans received November 5th, 2021. An interdepartmental referral, date of receipt November 8th, 2021 from our fire marshal. And interdepartmental referral from our environmental planner dated November 8th, 2021. And that is, I believe, all that I have. Good. Thank you. And again, if the applicant would please introduce herself and begin, their pres uh, begin her presentation. And if, uh, if you could please pull the microphone uh, close to you so we can hear everything. 
My name is Margaret Kelly Watson. I'm Again, please just pull it a little bit closer to you, if you would. I'm here representing my husband. You guys have a notarized letter from him. Um, we are looking to complete an accessory dwelling apartment for um, 30 Valley View Drive. Um, and that's why I'm here. Okay. Uh, again, Mr. Pagini, uh, would you like to comment on the application as far as uh, its compliance uh, or if you have any, uh, any comments that you'd like to make? Uh, no, it complies with all the regulations, and she uh, did give me a copy of the notarized letter that she is on here on behalf of her husband. So. Okay. Uh, commission members, any questions for the applicant? Yes, Mr. Allenson. Mr. Chairman, um, I just need to abstain. Okay. Uh, that being the case, uh, again, Mr. Perrin, if you would please uh, take uh, Mr. Allenson's uh, place on, the, uh, on this particular application. So with that, uh, Mr. Perrin, I guess you uh, have to ask all Mr. Allison's questions. <laughs> uh, seeing that there's no uh, questions from, uh, from commission members, uh, I believe the applicant has given us a very thorough presentation of the uh, application. Uh, Mr. Pagini has indicated it's uh, complied with all of our regulations. At this point in time, I'd uh, entertain a motion on the application. Mr. Chairman, I uh, move we uh, make a motion to approve application to to. 3-21, site plan 710 square feet accessory apartment, D. Watson Jr., 30 Valley View Drive, a site plan approval request, oops, sorry, site plan approval request to construct a 710 square foot accessory apartment on plans entitled existing conditions map dated September 16, 2021, subject to comments and inter office memorandum from Vanessa uh, Batista, a registered sanitary and health department to the planning and zoning department dated 11-9-2021 and final inspection by the zoning enforcement officer. Good. We have a uh, motion on the application. Do we have a second? A second. Second by Mr. Fitzsimmons. Voting beginning with Mr. Hine, please. Yes to approve. Yes. 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 And yes, your application has been approved. Have a good evening. Thanks. And uh, with that, uh, our next item is item number six, election of officers, as indicated early on, uh, as uh, Mr. Cohan was not able to attend this meeting, we will not be doing election of officers. And it brings us now to uh, discussion and possible action on proposed revised fee schedule presented by the uh, planning department staff. And again, Mr. Pagini, if you would uh, take the wheel, please. Uh, the same as we proposed uh, last month. Uh, we, I did do some research on special permitting fees in the region. Uh, I looked at pretty much a 50 mile radius of uh, Wallingford and tried to find as many uh, instances of the fees as I could for special permits. A lot of towns actually do not offer special permits. Um, so I did include a list in the notes uh, for you. Um, and I don't feel like our fees are that out of line, either too expensive or not expensive enough uh, in that regard. Um, but obviously it's open to uh, discussion. Thank you. Uh, commission members, comments, discussion on uh, the fee schedule as proposed. Mr. Fitzsimmons. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, just. Uh, a question, if we could, at the very bottom under Z ZBA applications for variance. Yep. So it says four hundred dollars, and then add a hundred for each additional variance request. So, if I want to put an oversized garage in, and I need a, um, that's a first variance, and then I need it for side line. That's that's another hundred. Yes. Height, another hundred. Yes. And total. It, Whatever, whatever, everything I'm adding is $100. Correct. Okay. Um, and then I, I would tell you I'm in full support of the additional fee to correct a zoning violation. It, that's currently not clear on our regs. Is that right? Yes. That yep. is currently uh, far less expensive now to okay. correct a violation. So. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Other commission members, any comments? Yes, at this particular point in time, if there's no further comments, uh, I'd entertain a, uh, a motion to adapt the uh, proposed fee schedule. 
Uh, Mr. Chairman, just one question. Does this still have to be, this has to be, go to the ordinance committee? It's my understanding. Correct. So just yes. the vote would be to approve to remand to the ordinance committee? Yes. Okay. I just want to make sure I, I say it right. Um, Mr. Chairman, I, I make a motion that we approve uh, and remand the uh, proposed revised fee schedule for the planning and, and department staff to the ordinance committee for their final adoption. Do we have a motion uh, by Mr. Uh, Vinoit? Do we have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Fitzsimmons, voting beginning with Mr. Hine. Yes. 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 And yes. Good. And uh, Mr. Pagini, if you would uh, continue with the agenda. Uh, so bond releases and reductions. Um, number eight can be released. Uh, we received the as built as requested, and there were no further issues uh, from that property. And, and as far as, excuse me, I'm sorry. Oh, you go ahead. No, as far as number nine, that one is not ready to be released or? Uh, no, I went and did a site inspection, and there are still some landscaping issues that need to be addressed with the remaining uh, portion of that bond. Okay. So at this point in time, I'd entertain a motion to release uh, item number eight, which is a special permit. It's the uh, Blickfield uh, Quality Subaru uh, Bond. It's recommended by our town planner. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we approve application 416-16 for bond release for special permit, Blickfield Quality Subaru 711 <laughs> North Colony Road. Do we have a uh, second? I'll second. Second by Mr. Fitzsimmons. Voting beginning with Mr. Hine, please. Yes. 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 And yes. So we're reducing the Subaru bond. Is that correct? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Benoit. And if you'd please continue with the uh, rest of the agenda, keeping in mind you're under no uh, gun to get our meeting uh, adjourned by 8 o'clock. <laughs> uh, administrative approvals. Uh, any questions on those? Uh, I will move on to um, yeah the ZBA report. That's the included in your packet. Uh, that's the same, and then I in also included the uh, response for the inquiry on the 384 South Colony from last month as well. Um, I don't know if you have any questions on the uh, zoning enforcement officer. Did say that the. Spreadsheet may not be the best way to look at the zoning enforcement log. Um, she thinks that maybe a report from her or something monthly or how she was doing it may be more sufficient, but she feels like a lot of the, the stuff that's on the log may not be um, relevant still, I guess she was saying. <laughs> so I don't, I, don't, I don't know. I don't, uh, she just said that there's a, uh, a lot of older stuff on there that's been referred to the law department that may not be, you know, even an active violation at this point. So, I guess if that's the case, then could it be kind of cleaned up? So, if, if there's mm -hmm. things that are no longer a violation, it could be just, you know, simply, you know, taken yeah. off then. So, I, I think it's a matter of perhaps having that cleaned up a, a bit. Sure. But I would, again, going back to the 384 South Colony, I mentioned that. Uh, the last meeting mm -hmm. and you know looking at the the report while it shows it's active it looks like the last time anything was done on this was in April of 2013 yeah it was uh, sent uh, to the law department in 2010 yeah and then I don't know where it went from there if you could follow up though just to see what the mm -hmm. you know it's nice to have this report but again if I'm looking at it I'm saying it's 2013 was the last time it seems to have been touched, and it's, this has just been an ongoing, it's been an ongoing issue. And right. uh, if you could perhaps get a uh, a more enlightened uh, response for uh, you know for the commission, I, I certainly would appreciate it. Sure, Mr. Fitzsimmons. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, I, first off, I would support that request, and and, and I I would say I, you know. Um, I, I have no qualms with the planning and zoning office or zoning enforcement, but, but it, it does fry me at the end of each meeting that we kind of acknowledge this, but mm -hmm. there, we're just, we don't, we're not getting a lot of traction on zoning enforcement. And I mentioned it 
we were discussing the stormwater, you know, it's now a 10 page report, you know, mm -hmm. and there's, some of these are quite old. So if they're old and active violations, then, then if they're, why haven't they been referred to the law department? Uh, in addition, to, I support the chairman's request to get an update from the law department. It would be helpful if um, uh, the, the, the ZEO could kind of say, these 15 have been referred to the law department, these mm -hmm. 15 have been cured, and these 70 are still open. I, I agree with these, some of these are quite old, mm -hmm. and, and, but the, the active ones concern me because they're, as I said on the stormwater, there's no teeth. You know, and, and now we're gonna change, we just, we hopefully we'll adopt a new fee schedule and people will be compelled to correct them, but there are illegal dwelling units on here. There are illegal three and four family houses. The town is liable because mm -hmm. If something were to happen and the town's aware and allowed it to continue without enforcement or correction, the, the, the occupant of the third floor of this building always talks about the town liability. We're liable. There's no question we're liable. And it concerns me the number of illegal dwelling units listed here, illegal four family, three family. We know about these. They're, they've been on our list. So I would respectfully request, as the chairman did, for an update from the law department on where they are with the zoning enforcement referrals that they've had. Okay. And then if necessary, after the first of the year, could we revisit the idea of some type of fine, some type of penalty, something to compel these yes. violators to correct? Yes, it, I've been uh, internally discussing, hopefully, some fines yeah. because I really don't have much uh, leg to stand on when it comes to enforcement a lot of times, so. It, you know, I mean, I, I, I was gonna chuckle because Mr. Cohen's not here, but you know, we have half a dozen rooster complaints, half a dozen. You know, I know where, I know where they are right oh. now, I, I know where they are right now, and, and, you know, but there's, there's people on here who've received a variance and they're not following it. There's people who are using self-storage for a full retail establishment. I mean, it's, it doesn't mm -hmm. speak well, and, and I would respectfully request through you, Mr. Chairman, if maybe in the January or February meeting, we don't end the meeting with this, we have it as a regular item, so we'd be more in tune sure. to discussing it and, and maybe invite the CEO, because I wanna support the office. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I enjoy what I do up here, but it's frustrating to see this list grow. It's frustrating when we try to, you know, stop uh, or enforce, you know, a violation. We don't really have much to, to go on, so. And we've uh, internally brought that up because we don't really have a way to, to stop someone from doing something. So, yeah. I mean, we, we just had that uh, variance request that came up and it still hasn't been resolved to this right. point. So it's hard for us. We, we pursue something, we send multiple letters and nothing really happens, so. I need to get Amy a badge. <laughs> Yeah, I appreciate Mr. Fitzsimmons' comments because I, mm -hmm. you know, I don't make light of you know people with illegal roosters and in, in, in making noise. I, <laughs> if someone had you know next to uh, next to where I live and they had roosters making all types of noise, that certainly would bother oh, me. Yeah. But I think we need to, you know, prioritize. I agree with Mr. Fitzsimmons because I raised the the, the the concern with respect to just the illegal uh, dwelling units in the you know, the liability that I think the town would face on this. We're, mm -hmm. you know, we're aware of it. And uh, I would hope that you could do, we could do more than just simply, in, you know, have a, a zoning violation and then find somebody. Uh, I would hope that the law department somehow, uh, you know, would be able to uh, take, you know, certainly much more, uh, much more aggressive action. And there's, as Mr. Fitzsimmons mentioned, numerous types of violations here, but I guess I, I would like to see uh, you and uh, Mrs. Torres to uh, Tori rather to have a you know a conversation uh, before our next meeting with the law department to see what action that they can have uh, with respect to getting uh, you know getting this issue getting this issue not resolved but getting it moving and taking some action on all of these because again as Mr. Fitzsimmons pointed out I suspect there's most of these have been on there for, you know, for quite some time. And it is, you know, it is an issue. If there happens to be a fire, happens to be something in some of these units, 
found those that they're illegal dwellings and you know, we haven't done anything. So uh, I think those violations, we certainly need to be extremely aggressive on. And mm -hmm. again, I, I would appreciate uh, to sit down with the law department, make uh, the law department very aware of what our concerns are and uh, come up with a plan uh, that how it's going to be, how the, those items are going to be addressed. Uh, I'd certainly appreciate that. I'm sure all the commission members would appreciate it. With that, if there's no other issues that uh, come before the commission, uh, I'd entertain a, uh, a motion to adjourn. And before I do that, I certainly wish everyone a very pleasant holiday season. So with that, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we adjourn our Monday, December 13th, 2021 Wallingford Planning and Zoning Commission meeting. We have a second. Second. Second by Mr. Fitzsimmons. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? We're adjourned. Again, have a good evening.